I want to share with you a spiritually personal story from a night many, many years ago when I was a young international aid worker. It was one night within a year that I was working in former Yugoslavia, a very intense year right after the end of the Civil War. And I was hoping to work with local organizations so that we could help rebuild communities. Civil War forces people from their homes in search of a place of safety, something that we take for granted. Their stories are full of suffering, filled with a horror and pain of not knowing what has happened to loved ones, of losing their neighborhood, losing their community to violent political forces beyond their control. Often they must flee their home, leaving all of their goods behind, a lifeline a lifetime of mementos, cars, clothes, everything they've worked for. But the worst is that they sometimes get separated from husbands, wives, and children in the midst of battle. International aid workers like myself in these environments leave their families behind because it's too dangerous to bring them with them. They encounter intense loneliness, pouring their energy into the work of helping others with long hours and emotional intensity. It is very draining work. What I want to share with you was in December. It was a small city. The weather had turned gray and dull. The view from my apartment was lifeless, a frozen stream and a cement-bound culvert a patch of yellowed dead grass, the light sucking gray of Soviet era apartment buildings and patches of dirty snow. At night, the view could be pretty with lights twinkling from windows and inside my apartment was comfortable, but little of it was mine. The only things I brought with me were some music, some clothes, some books. I left behind my grandparents, my parents, my brothers, and all of my friends. There was no chance of them coming to visit in this still very unsafe place. As that particular day came to a close, I felt particularly despondent as I fixed dinner in someone else's kitchen, using someone else's pots and pans, eating on someone else's plate, sitting at someone else's table. I got ready for bed, I sat down in a chair, the lights still on, feeling adrift, feeling separated. And added to that was the weight of the pain of the communities that I was working with. I'd heard so many terrible stories. In the midst of all it felt like I was holding I suddenly felt enveloped in a warm energy. I felt not alone. I was startled at first and a little scared, and then I just decided to sink into the experience. A dear friend's smiling face floated into my mind. The unconditional love of my parents gently buoyed me. My mind wandered to the first time I did this work as a volunteer in a refugee camp in Sudan. My mind's eye saw again the children, dozens of them, shouting in joy in this place of death, shouting in joy as they kicked a homemade ball that didn't even roll straight. One of them had kicked the ball to me, inviting me, a stranger, into their game. I recall the teenager that I had met just the year before in a Croatian refugee camp. She had been abused repeatedly in an elementary school turned into a prisoner of war brothel. And yet she had been filled with the thrill of learning English from visitors, and she was excited preparing to emigrate to Texas with her mother and her father and her sister who had somehow managed to stay together. In my time with her, I grew to understand that she drew strength from knowing she was not alone in her suffering in this world. She drew strength from those who came to serve her 
and others, neither family nor friends, but strangers from across the world that she knew cared enough to come and be with her. So as I sat in the light of that cold, gray day, I marveled at the resilience of the human spirit, and I still do that today. I am just amazed by the resilience of our human spirit, the ability to overcome loss, loss of parents, loss of relationships, loss of home, loss of country, and also to overcome the small disappointments of the day-to-day -day that try to pick away at our hope. That resilience comes from compassion and love from our friends, our family, from strangers, from neighbors. Jesus, that radical Jewish prophet said, when I was hungry, you fed me. We are each the conduit for divine love. Each of us has a depth of strength from which we can replenish each other. Those children shared a joy with me that has lodged in my heart and I still carry with me that teenager shared her zest for life that has lodged within me and still feeds me to this day. And yet, those children will never know, and that teenager will never know the impact that they had on my life. And so it is with much of our lives. We never realize or know all those we have touched. But whenever we are in the company of each other, of any living being, we are offered a chance to give loving kindness. It is a gift to us the gift, that is, of being able to give. We are deeply connected to each other, to the earth, to this divine, inanimate universe, to God, Allah, spirit of life and love. But no, no matter what, your very soul, no matter what you are going through, your very soul is never alone. You are never alone. Draw on this. This is the deepest knowing that resides in each of us. And in the light of day, and in those times when darkness enfolds you, remember and replenish your soul. A song for the lovers who never will meet Star-crossed and stumbling out on the street A song for the preacher down on her knees Praying for answers she never quite sees A song for the ones who run into the fire To put out the flames of this world on its pyre a song for the driver who runs out of road With nobody there to help shoulder the load Going home Going home 